This first song is going to be about a hainted backwoods mountain town in East Tennessee. <laughs> up into this mystic tour it's been incredible played a bunch of psychedelic venues I played a Trader Joe's employee after party <laughs> it's pretty psychedelic I ate a 50 milligram weed candy at that Trader Joe's after party when I was on stage playing I saw beams of light coming out of my fingers and shit all the Trader Joe's employees out there in the darkness, and it was mystically lit up in this place with like neon, purple, and pink lights and shit. I played a porno studio. Dos Pornos. <laughs> oh, man. Well, hold on, guys. I'm going to have to replace the string real quick. But I'll uh, continue telling you about this uh, psychedelic tour as I do so. So, uh, the porno studio was pretty lit. It was in the Adirondacks in a town called Plattsburgh, and it was called 5P, Psychedelic Pimpinati Plattsburgh Porno Pad Productions. <laughs> and uh, it was a pretty nutty place. It was like a young, shriveled Ron Jeremy kind of looking guy. And, it, and there was a porn star woman who lived there too. And uh, it was pretty nuts. 
You know, uh, the dude, the young, shriveled Ron Jeremy guy actually hit me up. I think maybe I'm a prospect porn star for his, uh, his next production, his next psychedelic porno pet production. But uh, next thing you know, uh, I'm supposed to play this show out in Schuylkill County, PA, which is uh, the most backwoods, painted, crazy zone in Pennsylvania. And, uh, and I went there, and it was way out in the middle of the woods, no phone signal way the fuck out there in the middle of the woods and roll up and I can feel the sinister vibes. I know it's gonna be a twisted night, you know what I'm saying? I can feel it and there's two cabins. And uh, I rolled in and they said, right off the bat, we're gonna, we're gonna show you where you're gonna stay tonight. I said, okay. They took me out to this one cabin and uh, I was hanging with this dog named Kaylee. And we cruise up to the room I'm supposed to stay in. They're like, yeah, that's the room you're staying in. And the dog wouldn't go inside. <laughs> it was standing at the edge of the room going, <laughs> staring at something that was inside the room that I couldn't see. <laughs> and I said, oh, shit, man. And I went in, and there was strange objects kind of ritualistically placed around the room. I could tell that if I was to sleep in that room that night, I'd wake up to like a Rosemary's baby orgy sacrifice type of thing standing around me <laughs> when I woke up. And I noticed that uh, where my head would have been if I had slept in this room, right on the other side of this weird like makeshift wall thing, it was the scariest motherfucking mask that I've ever seen in my entire life. This demonic mask. Definitely haunted as a motherfucker. And there was a dude who was there who was hanging. Really solid dude. Pretty, pretty solid psychedelic guy. Through hike the Appalachian Trail and stuff. But he took one look at that motherfucking mask. I took him out there. I said, look at this mask. Motherfucker ran out the building. <laughs> this mask was terrifying. So I said, man, I'm not staying in this hainted ass room, in this fucked up ass cabin. I said, man, so I went to where everybody else was chilling, where these like bros live in this other cabin. And I was like, man, I ain't staying in that hainted room. And they said, you think that place is haunted? This spot right here, the woman who lived here five years ago, blew her brains out in the building, sitting on this couch right here. They didn't throw the couch away. They said it was too comfortable. <laughs> so we got the suicide couch, <laughs> fucking terrifying the entire time. Homegirl's ghost is definitely kicking it with me. I'm feeling it as I'm sitting on the porcelain throne. I'm like, I know she took a crap right on this John, right before she blasted herself. And she's like, I could feel her chilling with me and shit. And I was like, good God. And then, you know, I go up to my car that someone moved way out into the woods. <laughs> Seemed kind of suspicious. Everything about this motherfucking place was pretty suspicious. The car door started opening and closing on its own. I'm not fucking with you guys. And I was like, what the fuck? And I went up to the guy and I said, dude, why is your place so motherfucking hainted, dude. He said, well, it's built on an Indian burial ground. I said, what the fuck? Next thing you know, they got a keg of yingling, cause like yingling's made literally eight miles away from where I was chilling. And on top of the keg of yingling, which is too heavy of a brew really to sip a thousand of, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> There was 300 beers on top of the keg. And there was 14 and a half people at the motherfucking party. <laughs> and so I was like, dude, and every beer got chugged. Every single one got sipped in this motherfucking place. At about 3 a.m., a car, big old truck comes revving and swerving, flying up the driveway, almost fell in the lake and shit. Turns out it's a prison guard just getting off of work. 
named the Bearcat. <laughs> and uh, he came out of his truck, ripped his shirt off, and tried to fight everybody up in the place. this like weird version of beer pong, a hainted version of beer pong. It's a strange place. This song's about that exact genre. food market is called Cumbies. Yeah. And I went up in that place a couple times on this tour and they have a new menu item <laughs> called the Pork Pullers. <laughs> I ain't fucking with y'all. It's called the Pork Pullers. And I saw that and I said, man, whoever the advertising person, they really fucked up. <laughs> pork Pullers is the name of an item on the menu. And I was saying to my boy, Big Abdul, I said, yo, what do you think of this? Pork pullers. He said, I think the guy that designed that, his name was Jack Meehoff. <laughs> Jack Meehoff, he's like in kind of in the mystic leagues of those writers like uh, my boy Claude Balls, who wrote that book, Revenge of the Wildcat. Maybe one of my favorite books, Yellow Rivers by I.P. Freely. <laughs> and the famous Under the Bleachers by Seymour Butts. <laughs> this is a wholly new instrumental tune right here.
spiritual blessing, y'all. Flesh Vortex, man, that shit was awesome. I see her for sure. When that dude started doing that demonic whistling, I, I was like, oh my God. That shit was awesome. I thought for a second it was somebody like being attacked in the hallway or something. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, it was just that holy, that holy music right there. You guys are amazing. Yes, yeah, so I was hiking in New Hampshire. And I was chilling. I was I was hiking in New Hampshire and I was up on uh, I was up on top of a mystic peak. And I, you know, had almost been struck by lightning and shit. Rode a tornado up in my tent. And there's a bunch of motherfucking honky-ass, saltine-ass motherfuckers up inside a shelter, and they're paying $150 a pop to sit up inside this building while they look out the window and see shrimps like me get struck by lightning and whatnot. But they let me use the bathroom inside, so I went inside. two stalls. And I was sitting down in one of the stalls doing my thing, and the other stall was empty. And all of a sudden, a dude came in to the bathroom, and he went in the other stall, but he didn't sit down in the toilet. He was just chilling in there, thinking to myself, I wonder what this guy's doing. He says, Little Zacky. I'm thinking to myself, what? Little Zacky, little Zacky. Thinking to myself, what the fuck? Who's little Zacky? I'm the only person in the bathroom. I'm not little Zacky. <laughs> little Zacky, I know you had a lot to eat tonight, but did you have to go again? <laughs> thinking to myself, who the fuck does this guy think he's talking to? Little Zacky, did you have to go again? I'm like, what? I know it's you in there, little Zacky. I see your little beige Crocs. Same beige Crocs I'm wearing right now. I see your little beige Crocs, little Zacky. I'm coming in. At this point, the motherfucker stuck his head underneath the stall. I said, dude, it ain't little Zacky. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He ran away. I ain't never seen that motherfucker after that. <laughs> the song's about hiking, my friends. <laughs>
Thanks to Holy Doug for setting up the show. Thanks to Holy Alex on the sound over there. It's a spiritual pleasure to be up in Chi-Town. We went to the Swapo Rama today. Had some mystic experiences. It was an open air massage parlor going down over there. <laughs> we should have investigated a little more into that. <laughs> Seen what was going down, but we, you know, we had to make moves. My boy Kyle had a strange experience up at the, the Mystic Flea Market. I won't get into that right now. <laughs> It was a very spiritual experience, and we dogged at that Phil's Pizza place, which was incredible. This next song right here is about a time in my life and a, a spiritual homie named Extra Cornbread Steve. Back in the day, I used to live in Marietta, Georgia. I live back in Georgia again now, but in Athens. I lived at this place in Marietta that they called the Temple of Love. And it was me and this insane harsh noise musician guy, we was living there together. We had two pusses that lived at the crib. One was all black, named Skittles. One was all white, named Taters. Big ass fucking pusses, huge ones. Skittles, the all black one, was an outdoor puss. Spent most of its side outside, most of its time out in the Mystic Yard. It would bring in the dead bodies of all the birds and the one time another puss and uh, all kinds of different animals, you know what I'm saying? But it wouldn't bring the bodies in, it would only bring in the skins. The mystic skins. It would suck the insides out of these motherfuckers like a straw. You could hear her sucking on them. <laughs> You'd be getting naughty in the bedroom, outside the door, outside the window, and they'd say, what the fuck is that noise with those demonic glowing eyes out there? I'd say, don't you worry, that's just Skittles. She's sucking the insides out of some poor sucker. We'll find the skins in the morning. Hopefully not up on your pillow, you know what I'm saying? She likes to leave them on the pillow sometime, a nice bloody skin. A taters was the indoor puss, big white cat, obese as fuck, eyes bulged out his head. Big yellow eyes bulging out of his head. He was a yogic puss. Now everybody's cat, everybody who has a cat, your cat definitely does a mystic personal 69. Probably all the time. That excites your boy more than the average homie, if you know what I'm saying. Seeing a cat doing a personal 69. But Taters was a yogic puss. He took it to a whole nother level. In India, some of the yogis out there, they eat pieces of string. And they swallow it. And they learn to control their digestive organs. Small intestine, big intestine, rectum, and all that shit. And they learn how to control it and move the string up and down with their mind. Taters did this. We came home from a hike one day and Taters had swallowed a bunch of discarded cassette tape. It was going in his mouth and out his ass. I said to my homie, I said, you fucking with that cat's ass, not me. But I did put my ears right next to its ass as he pulled the tape. <laughs> I can tell y'all that a cat's anus acts as a tape head. That puss's rectum was so motherfucking tight that when he pulled the tape out, you could hear the music that was on the motherfucker. <laughs> a slight mystic drone sounded like something off Halsu Mountain Records or something. I said, whoa, that's amazing. So for y'all experimental musicians using contact mics up on the testaqualis and all that shit, remember, also a cat's anus acts as a tape head. Keep that in mind for your future performances and whatnot, y'all. Now, when I was living with those two pusses, it was right down the street from a backwoods-hainted diner called Viddles. 
I would go into fiddles all the time. The waitresses was puffing on unholy glass pipes and light bulbs, if you know what I'm saying. Puffing the crystal meth. The waitresses, when you'd roll up in the spot, they'd start howling and screaming at you. They'd be all fogged out. <laughs> you knew you was in the right spot when you came with the fiddles. I brought a psychedelic Italian noise rock band there one time to eat breakfast after they had performed at my house the night before. One of the members of this Italian noise rock band was a white Rasta, and he was ordering from the menu. And the waitress said, what do you have? He said, pancakes with feet. <laughs> she said, what the fuck? <laughs> a pancakes with fruit. What the fuck? Pancakes with fruit. I said, he's trying to say pancakes with fruit. She said, why didn't he say that the first time? I said, I got no clue. <laughs> I brought my boy Extra Cornbread Steve up in there for the first time. His name was not Extra Cornbread Steve yet at this time, because this is how he got his name. He rolled up in, he ordered the three vegetable plate, something you do not do at this establishment. <laughs> and he said, an Extra Cornbread, please. The waitress had just puffed a mystic light bulb full of meth. She was fired up. She says, Heck Street Cornbread! Ah! <laughs> we knew we was in for some shit. <laughs> About 30 minutes later, she came out of the kitchen wheeling a cart with so much motherfucking cornbread on top of it. More cornbread than anybody in this room has ever seen put together in their entire life. Everybody conglomerate. I believe there was infinity slices. They were so tall, the stacks, it was scraping cobwebs off the roof of this twisted ass place. She rolled it up to the table, infinity slices. My man probably ate about a quarter of one piece. That's how he got the name, Extra Cornbread Steve. He lived out in a spot where the ground was made of mostly quartz crystals. Palookaville, Georgia. That's why this holy tune right here is called the Quartz Blues. Sitting there on a pile of quartz by the riverside, thinking about those beautiful round eyes. Sitting there looking at the setting sun.
got one last tune here, guys. Up next is Health and Pubies, as I like to call it. Health and Beauty. Health and Pubies. Full band, guys. It's going to be up the chain, so don't leave. It's going to be amazing. I got one last tune. I got three different records for sale. I got a tape. I got some pins and stuff. Please holler at me, y'all. So uh, right before this tour, quick mystic tale, I went on a 300 mile hike to warm up for this mystic tour. And I met a couple psychedelic ass homies on the way. For one of the first nights I was out there. In a two level shelter, psychedelic, puffing pounds, chugging, there was some orgies going on and shit. Mystic skinny dipping. Everybody passed out. There was the bottom level of the shelter and there was the top level. The top level was a 17 foot drop off. And if you were sleeping on the top level, if you rolled off, you would fall 17 feet onto a big ass wooden slab and probably crack your neck or something. So everybody was sleeping on the bottom, but as we went to sleep, we were all looking up thinking like, man, I hope nobody falls off that motherfucker tonight. About 4 a.m., everybody in the place awakes to a loud smack. We knew somebody fell off. Everybody gets up, put on their headlamps, looking to see if there's a carcass down there, maybe a shattered leg or something like that. We're not seeing anything. There's nothing there. We're like, dude, we know somebody just fell off this motherfucker. Where are they? Our lights coalesce in the corner of the place, and there is a shriveled figure in the corner. It appears to be a 90-year-old grandpa rocking a satin blue thong mangled up in the corner. I said, what the fuck is that? My homegirl sitting next to me, she said, it looks like a 90-year-old grandpa naked rocking a satin blue thong mangled up. I said, that's what I thought it was. You okay, dude? Uh, he's mangled up in the corner, shriveled, emaciated. I'm like, what the fuck? Are you okay? Uh, in a satin blue thong. He eventually stands up really slowly. Somebody handed him a cigarette lighter. And he lit it, he's staring off into the distance with the lighter in the front, sagged ass, ass cheeks hanging down, shriveled old man dong hanging out to the side of this ancient satin blue dong. A nightmarish image. I said, what the fuck? As best as we could tell, he was tugging, watching us while we were sleeping and then fell off when he got too excited. I gotta tell y'all, it ain't the first time that's happened here. I went to sleep, I woke up, I got the fuck out of there real quick. Didn't see that shriveled old grandpa in the morning. Too scary. I rolled on. Next thing you know, I met a guy named Earbuds. That was his trail name, you know, Earbuds. When I'm out on the trail, my name is Manimal. Manimal. Holy Manimal. Earbuds was hanging out with an obese Nick Nolte lookalike, whose name was Nick Nolte. <laughs> they were also hanging out with a guy named Shitfoot. His feet smelled like a big old pile of shit. Late that night, Earbuds comes rolling into camp, a little later than people usually do, and he sat down. People was all up in their sleeping bags, getting ready to go to bed. And he sat down and he pulled out a two pound summer sausage. I'm talking like a football of meat. He yanks out a two pound summer sausage and he deep throws the motherfucker. In less than a minute, one of my shrimps got on a stopwatch, recorded him. He deep throated a two pound summer sausage in 60 seconds. <laughs> I said, dude, fuck earbuds, your name is Summer Sausage. His name turned out to become two pounds one minute. <laughs> the next day, 
I'm hanging out with five different people and all camped out at one specific campsite. Five different cool people. And at the end of the night, you hang up your food in the tree so the bears can't get it. You hang it 10 feet up and seven feet out from a mystic bear hang from the limbs so the bears can't get the food. You know what I'm saying? So five different people, five different bags of food, they hung them from a limb. The bears at this specific campsite started getting real smart. And they learned how to get on each other's shoulders and shit and get the bags out the limb. So five different people this night got their food bags jacked, torn out the tree, thrown down on the ground, pretty much mostly ripped open, food was sucked down, in one of the bags there was a half gallon of prescribed extra zinc suntan lotion. Those bears sucked that motherfucker back like a cold old style. But one of the people in that group was vegan. The bears did not go near that vegan food. That bag was untouched, sitting there. These motherfuckers sucked back a half gallon of extra zinc suntan lotion like a cold, mystic, old-style brew. But they would not go near no vegan food. I thought to myself, if that is not spiritual, I do not know what is. <laughs> And finally, it had been raining for seven days. I was shriveled up like a motherfucking raisin cruising down the trail, my skin coming off and shit like that. I really needed some mystical relaxation and shelter. And somebody said, well, there's a hainted backwoods hostel point two off the trail at that next road crossing. I think they got beers and shit. I said, whoa, we going. So I cruise up pouring down rain, lightning storm, about to get struck. I roll up to the spot and there's all these signs that says no trespassing. Trespassers will be shot. Survivors will be shot again. I said, whoa, hell yeah. I walk right up in the joint. They had a fridge full of PBRs. They had a bunch of frozen pizzas and a strange grill that I knew you were supposed to cook the pizzas up on. So I pulled out a Supreme Za, threw it up on the Holy Hainted Grill, fired it up, chugged about six pubers in about 90 seconds. And I'm sitting back waiting to see who's gonna pull up at this fucked up ass place that I'm hanging out at. A truck rolls up about 20 minutes later. Two dudes up in the truck. They pop out the truck. One of the guys is the owner of the place. His name is Timmy Two Tokes. I got his email, timmytutokes at gmail.com. <laughs> and then the other guy in the truck was strictly an inbred shrimp. Eyes sunken in, looking all fucked up, could literally not speak English. <laughs> yeah! I said, whoa, hell yeah. I said, what you boys been up to today? Spiritual three-word answer. Smoking crystal meth! <laughs> Motherfuckers start whittling sticks faster than you have ever seen someone do it before. Motherfuckers started flint napping. That means you're knocking rocks together, making arrowheads. Mystical meth activities, if you will. Next thing you know, the shotters are coming out. Boom! Shooting into the sky. Bang, bang! Wiling out. Next thing you know, it started to get grimmer and grimmer and more psychedelic. Another truck pulls up with four inbred shrimps who are obviously related in a non-spiritual fashion, if you know what I'm saying. All looking twisted. One of them had a pair of bolt cutters up in his hand. He goes, who's getting their fingers chopped off today, boys? I said, whoa, not me. The reason he had the bolt cutters was they had just jacked a picnic table from a rest area a couple miles up the way. Still had some chains on it. So they busted off the chains and they're going crazy, puffing meth. And I'm just like, dude, more and more guns are being pulled out. Then somebody rolled up that was so psychedelic. I said, okay, this is my cue to leave. I rolled out, I hiked about five more miles up to a mystic mountaintop. But 
That happened in a psychedelic town in East Tennessee that I used to live in and used to live right next to. Flag Pond, Tennessee. And this last song right here is dedicated to all y'all shrimpanatis up in Chicago, man. It's a, it's a spiritual pleasure to be here. I love you guys, man. I got records and stuff, so holla at me, man. Thanks to everybody who held the pubies up next.